In the Gospel reading today, we have this very well-known story of our Lord asking Peter the three times if he loves him. In St. Augustine, of course, we recall pointing out to us that three times Peter had to acknowledge his love for our Lord in order to make up for the three times that Peter had denied the Lord. I always like to look at this a little bit differently, and that is to look at the words that are there. As I've explained before, in Greek there are four words for love. In Latin, there are three words for love. In English, there is one. Consequently, it doesn't matter which word is used in Greek or in, English, in, in Latin, we translate it the same way. But even the way that St. Jerome translated this, because of this struggle of trying to get the point from Greek into, into Latin, even translated it down a little bit. Because in Greek, Jesus asked Peter if he loves him with agape love. And Peter answers that he loves him with friendship love, with philos love. It's where there's a problem into the Latin. So St. Jerome just translated this from the words diligere and, and amare, so diligis me and ama, amote, as the conversation would go. But again, you see it's two different words, even there in the Latin, two different concepts of what love is. The second time Peter asks, and Jesus asks Peter again, if he loves him with agape. Second time Peter answers him, that Lord, you know that I love you with philos, as a friend. Agape is the highest kind of love. It's the selfless kind of love. It's the way that God loves us. So now Jesus comes the third time, and he asks Peter, do you love me with philos as a friend? And Peter says, Lord, you know everything. You know that I'm your friend. You know that I love you with a friendship love. Now there are a couple of things that we can look at with this then. First of all, the question that has to be posed to each one of us. Jesus is looking at each one of us and says, do you love me? Now again, are we going to look at it in English or are we going to look at it more specifically? Because Greek is a much, much more precise language than English is. Do you love the Lord with agape love in a selfless way? Is the Lord truly who the one who is most important in your life and from whom everything else flows and you will serve him in your life and in your death? Or do we look at him and say, yeah, well, I'm your friend, you know, I, I, yeah, I, I love you, yeah, but, you know, you're my pal. Okay. Now we also see our Lord's response. When Peter isn't able to tell our Lord that he loves him the way that our Lord loves Peter, Jesus comes down to Peter's level. Peter, do you love me with philos love? So since Peter can't come up to where our Lord is, our Lord comes down to where Peter is. Sort of what he did right at the very beginning. He was incarnate. He came down to our level in order to lift us up to his. And that's exactly what he tells Peter is going to happen. He says, when you're older, someone else is going to dress you and they're going to lead you where you don't want to go. And it says, he, did, he said this to signify the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Peter would be able to love one day with agape love even though on that day he wasn't at that point. And so too for us. If we are not able to say, yes, Lord, I love you with agape love. I love you the same way that you love me. But even if we're able to say, well, it's, this, it's a little bit lower than that. It's, you know, it's a friendship. I love you as a friend. It's a good thing. Then he will come down to our level. And what a blessing. He's not looking at us and saying, look, if you don't love me the same way that I love you, get lost. I don't have time for people like you. He doesn't say that, thankfully. 
He's not saying, when you can love me the way that I love you, come back and talk to me again, then we'll look at it a second time. He's willing to accept what we can give. And thanks be to God for his mercy. But at the same time, you can recognize with what he did with Peter that he's going to ask us to continue to grow. Remember the principle with charity, it's either growing or it's going backwards. You're either gaining or you're losing. It never stays the same. So you're either going to love God more or you're going to love him less. God wants us to love as he does. That's what we'll be doing in heaven. And if this life is preparation for eternity, then it's to prepare ourselves to be able to get to that point that we can love the way that he loves us. We see that in the life of the martyrs, that they have such a love for the Lord that they're willing to die for him. They're willing to lay down their life. Are we willing to do that? Again, if you look at that and shy away and think, oh, I don't know. Well, okay, we've got philos love at least. We're here, we're striving to love him, we're trying to develop the prayer life, we're, we're working at it. We, he is our, our friend. Perhaps, and hopefully all of us can say, he's my best friend. But I'm still not quite at that point that I love him quite the same way he loves me. But again, thankfully, he accepts that. And he continues to invite you forward. That again is where we even look at the circumstances going on right now. From the sound of things, we're not going to be martyred at this point yet anyway. But we all have an opportunity to be able to answer this question. There is some suffering coming. The worst suffering always comes from the people that you don't expect it from. If somebody up the street absolutely hates your guts and treats as you treats you like trash, and then they're doing bad things to you and so on, you go, yeah, what do I expect? But when it's your spouse or it's your parents or it's somebody who says that they love you and then something happens and they treat you badly, it's devastating. When this is coming from our Holy Mother, the Church, how devastating, how painful to pull the rug out from underneath us intentionally, willfully, and even maliciously. Well, it's not quite martyrdom, is it? But how are we going to handle it? If your life was being asked of you for the sake of our Lord, how would you handle it? That's not, we're at, not at that point just yet, but something is going to be asked of us, and it's gonna be very painful. And we can scream and yell and holler about how unjust it is and these rotten people and look at all the corruption. It may all be true, but did Jesus say anything about that when he was being tried? Did he look at the high priest and say, look, this is a bunch of garbage. You guys are so unjust. The law says this. What are you doing? You're supposed to be the high priests that are serving the Lord, and you're doing exactly the opposite. And he didn't look at Pilate and say, oh, you know, you think you're so great, but, you know, this is horribly, this is unjust. He didn't say that. It's true, it was the greatest injustice in human history. But we don't see Jesus lashing out. We don't see St. Stephen doing that. We don't see St. Paul doing that. We don't see St. Peter doing that. We don't see any of the martyrs doing that. What we're being going to be asked to do at this point is considerably less than martyrdom. Should we be lashing out? Should we be screaming about the injustice? Should we be handling this in a pagan kind of way? I should say not. We're being asked, do you love me? That's what each one of us is being asked. What is your answer? 
It's going to be demonstrated in our actions. Oh, speaking the words is easy. Acting on them is hard. So we're all going to find out just how much we really love him just by watching our own actions and listening to what comes out of our own mouths. Is it charitable? Is it peaceable? Is it kind? Isn't that what St. Paul tells us? Comes from the Holy Spirit? The wisdom from above? Got to think about these things. It's going to be really easy to be angry and negative, and it is going to get no one anywhere except more angry and more negative. We are being given an opportunity to carry the cross. We're being given an opportunity to be able to suffer unjustly. St. Peter, it seems to me, talked about that. He said, if you're made to suffer, un- if it's a just thing, you deserved it anyway. If it's unjust, he said, then the Holy Spirit has come to rest upon you. Hmm. So which way do we want to go? Do we want to grow in love? Do we want to love him more? Or do we want to keep digging a hole and getting more angry and digging deeper and screaming and yelling and hollering and justifying ourselves the whole way while we're digging our way to hell. But boy, we're right. You may be right about the fact that it's unjust. We're not right in the way we're handling it if we're doing that. So we have an opportunity now. Sounds like a couple of weeks to prepare ourselves to really look at our prayer life, to look at if we're losing our interior peace. Why would we lose our interior peace? Again, look at the examples that we have. Look in the Acts of the Apostles and see what St. Stephen did. He had a face like that of an angel. He didn't lose his peace when they were throwing unjust things at him, when they were accusing him falsely when they were threatening him, when they finally put him to death. He didn't lose his peace, he just kept his focus on the Lord. The Lord didn't lose his peace, neither did Peter or Paul or the other martyrs. So put it all in perspective and look forward. Even if they succeed, and Father Zulsdorf is asking everybody to pray a novena to the Holy Face from the 7th to the 15th of, of July for all of this intention. And I hope it works. I don't think it will, but I hope it does. Prayers aren't gonna be wasted, don't worry about that. But again, all this needs to happen. And so we have to remember, it, is, it needs to happen. So let it happen. And just look forward, because it's all going to be back. In fact, if I'm correct, it's going to be the only thing that is going to be there in the triumph of Our Lady's Immaculate Heart. But in the meantime, we're going to be tested. Everyone on the face of the earth is ultimately going to be tested. It's going to start with us. But isn't that also what St. Peter told us happens? that the purification, he said, begins in the house of God. And he said, if it begins there, what's going to happen when it goes outside of there? So, once again, should we be surprised this is what's going on? No. Praise the Lord. Not rejoicing and praising God for an injustice, but praising him that we have the opportunity to be with him in a situation that is unjust, that we have the opportunity to be with him so that we can actually show him how much we love him. And we have an opportunity to find out for ourselves how much we actually love him. 
Because he's asking if we have agape love. We'd like to say yes. We're going to find out soon. So hopefully we can respond that way. Maybe we'll respond like St. Peter did. You know that I'm your friend. But even if we can do that, he will move us forward. He's doing exactly what he told Peter. Somebody else is going to gird you. They're going to lead you where you don't want to go. Isn't that what we're hearing? That's what's coming. So praise God, because that's the means by which we are going to be able to love him with agape love, that we will be able to respond to him. Not just that I love you as a friend, but that I love you the way that you love me.